A loud vomit echoes around the room. The girl sitting next to Lucas's corpse has finally cracked. I take a quick look at Evelyn. She continues her lecture without caring about the sickening noise. And of these concepts bring us back of and of all and all of these concepts bring us back to the decision making process that you should already be familiar with. Were you the one who was afraid you'd die if you threw up? She spared you. Maybe she kills randomly. She's a witch. You'd kill anyone. I don't know. I mean, you, you know that Lucas was a bit... Lucas was my friend! Is he a asshole who abused girls? That's pure bullshit. This story, this was true? He's a sinner. Repent or you will all die. Heard about this. Of course it's true. I know one of his victims. I heard he always uses the same method. He picks up a shy girl. She comes to his room and he... But that doesn't necessarily imply that she didn't agree. I know a girl who didn't. He's the worst trash. He had several victims in this university. This is no news. Shut up! If that was true, they would have told the cops. No, that's why he picked shy loner girls. It's much harder for them to go to the police. Besides, it's unbearable to even tell anyone about the details. I also know a girl who was abused by Lucas. All the girls in our year know he is super dangerous. So true. That's why most of his victims are from the other years. Lucas may have been an asshole, but how does this help us in any way? The witch is going to kill us all. She's going to start asking questions again very soon. Yeah, that witch going to kill us like she killed Matt? I know Matt. He wasn't so much of a saint either. Don't you dare say that Matt deserved to die. Right? Yeah, but I mean, let's be honest. We're We've all got things we could probably work on, I mean, to lesser degrees, for some of us. Uh, you know. Matt was abusing girls? I've known him for years, he would never do that. I don't think he did that kind of thing, but I heard about a messed up story of him. He had a one night stand with a girl who got pregnant, and he made her have an abortion. So what? Matt didn't do anything wrong, she made the decision to abort. Despite the visceral fear that refuses to leave my body, I tried to concentrate on the last exchanges. Matt first forced the girl he slept with to have an abortion. This reminds me of something. The memory of the exchange between Matt and Evelyn just before his death suddenly flashes back to me. When a couple is expecting a child, who should make the decisions? Evelyn, she asked Matt that question? A very specific question for Matt. Does that mean she knew? In a brief moment of lucidity, I tried to gather my thoughts. Evelyn is a demon, a, a witch, a psychopath. She can kill us all with a snap of her fingers. And yet, yet... She follows a very specific plan. She gives us orders, terrifies us, asks us questions. A small voice in my head starts to grow louder. What if, what if she didn't kill randomly? I mentally run down the casualty list. Lucas, seems like he was abusing girls. People might even say he deserves what he got. He's someone punishable. Matt, he forced a girl to have an abortion. Another behavior Evelyn would want to punish, as she might consider that he was gaslighting the girl to get what he wanted, regardless of the girl's well-being. Yet he answered that the mother should be the one to make the decisions. Did he suspect that Evelyn knew? Did he sense that this question was directly aimed at him regarding this very specific event? Perhaps just his conscience was eating away at him for such a decision made in the past. And he couldn't bear to state his actual opinion on the topic. Evelyn didn't seem to expect any particular answer. Actually, I, I don't know if there is really a good answer to such a vague question. But then, was it a trick question? 
Was it a question designed to psychologically torture him before killing him for good, to punish him for his behavior? Let's start again. Lucas and Matt may have been punished for their behavior toward the girls, but what about the other deaths? The one who died by fire while trying to open the door? The girl who was killed while vomiting on the floor, unable to move? The one who was left paralyzed, standing by the door. No, no, no. Class is not over. I'm sorry, but eating is not allowed in class. That's how you mess up the room. I, uh, I, uh, it's not a valid excuse. Sorry. Did they die? Because they didn't follow the rules imposed by Evelyn? The, what would those rules be? If you don't go back to your seats, I'll have to punish you too. Is everyone seated? Good, let's get back to the questions. I expect you to take notes seriously. Would it be enough to be a good, obedient student to survive? Lucas and Matt died after being questioned directly. In other words, they probably had no hope of survival. Evelyn wanted them dead. As for the others, they were not interrogated. They died because they did not obey the rules. They were not seated. They did not follow the class. They tried to leave the room in the middle of class. I shake my head to try to give myself some hope. <laughs> I'm sure my theory holds up. Once Evelyn is done punishing all the students guilty of punishable behavior, she will spare the others, surely. The others. The ones who can follow the rules until the end of the class. I need to share this with the others so that there are no more casualties. I've just had to write on the chat when Evelyn lets out a loud exclamation. Oh, I almost forgot a little question. I instantly freeze as if paralyzed by an unearthly cold embrace. Emma turns to me, looking even more terrified than before. I squeeze her hand with all my strength and utter a few words under my breath. You're safe. She should be in no danger. She's taking notes. She's listening to the lecture. She's a very good student. She's a girl. Evan seems to only punish guys guilty of terrible behavior towards girls. I pray that my theory is correct. I think I should be alright. I'm a normal guy. And yet, why am I shaking like a leaf? You there. What's your name? Breathless, I look up with devastated eyes at Evelyn, who is staring at someone across the room. M -m me Dead silence. All the students turn to the unfortunate girl. I recognize her. It's Lucy, the rather loner girl in the class. Evelyn simply nods with a broad smile, arms leaning against her desk near the border or near the board yeah board <laughs> the brief relief of knowing i'm safe is immediately replaced by frustration at the inconsistency of the choice of the new victim why is she singling out a girl unless unless she's not planning to kill her that's that's always a choice that's always an option maybe evan just wants to psychologically torture us into thinking she's going to kill everyone Maybe she'll spare this girl and kill the next student she asks the question to. The next one. That could be me. Claire, my name is Claire. I frown. What is she doing? Her name is Lucy. If everyone finds out she's lying to her. Claire, that's a pretty name. Lucy's face is almost morbidly pale. But she manages to hold Evelyn's gaze without blinking. I've always thought that the name we're giving at birth is a starting point for great injustice, since we don't choose it ourselves. What do you think, Claire? She knows. She knows that Lucy lied to her. She knows everything. Lucy's doomed. 
Yes, you're... You're right. I'm always right, no need to mention it. <laughs> Evelyn's smile widens, and she bursts out laughing. I'm kidding, of course. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Indeed. That's what we're all afraid of, is it not? Lucy's face breaks down as Evelyn walks up the stairs toward the row where her new victim is sitting. This psychological torture is unbearable. Including for us bystanders. Does Evelyn plan to kill her? Or does she just want to terrorize her? So, Claire. A question for you about... Responsibility. I resign myself to the obvious. Lucy is going to die. Is a person who distributes illegal content on the internet guilty, even if he or she do not participate in the making of that content themselves? Ooh. I, mean, I think legally under the law and arguably morally, yes. Lucy bursts into tears in response to this oddly specific question. Please! I didn't know! I thought they were always consenting, I swear! Evelyn stares condescendingly at Lucy, half leaning over her. The unearthly glow of her medallion gleams on the tear-streaked face of the hapless victim. Please, Mary, I'm so sorry! Please, please! Evelyn's gaze grows a little softer. Lucy, I'm sorry to see you so desperate. Lucy raises her pleading eyes. But your answer is off topic. With a simple gesture, Evelyn causes a small, bluish mist to appear and ripple around Lucy's body. The latter begins to tremble so violently that her seat hammers the metal railing that serves as its support in a sonorous clank clacking. The shaking stops after a few seconds. And with a dull thud, Lucy's head falls against the table, her face turned in my direction. A fresh wave of nausea seizes me. Blood has abundantly spurted from her eyes and mouth during her agony. With a snap of her fingers, Evelyn clears the magical mist and walks back down to the podium, a mysterious smile on her face. Remember... Responsibility is one of the must-have sociological studies in the program. Once back by her desk, Evelyn continues the class as if nothing had happened. Nothing in her appearance betrays the murder she has just perpetrated. Not her immaculate clothes, not her impeccably... Qu qu queefed? Is that how you spell it? Queefed? Queefed her? Not her medallion, which has returned to its usual hue. Don't forget to take notes. This is important. I hear the sound of someone puking from across the room, but no screams. Most of the students go back to tapping away fervently at their keyboards, looking terrified. Evelyn also targets girls. No one's safe. Emma, I love you. I whisper these words without taking my eyes off my screen, terrified of attracting Evelyn's attention. Emma simply squeezes my hand with unusual strength. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a few tears falling on her keyboard as she continues to take notes. I have to figure out the rules of the statistic, sadistic, perverted game. I have to save Emma. I close my eyes and try to recall the details of the scene despite the gagging in my stomach. Evelyn asked a very specific question again. Lucy didn't react in her usual way. As if she knew exactly what it was about. Please, I didn't know. <laughs> they were always consenting, I swear. Lucy. She was guilty. She admitted her guilt. She understood that Evelyn had targeted her for a reason. Evelyn's criterion for guilt would simply be harming other girls, 
Regardless of the gender of the perpetrator, perhaps? I log back into the chat room at full speed. I need to know more about Lucy's story. Does anyone know what Lucy was talking about? Who are the non-consenting people? We're all gonna die. She's a sinner too. Repent, everyone. This guy seems to have lost his mind, but I feel like his sinner theory is somehow kind of right. I just need to confirm it with Lucy's story. Just rumors, but I heard she was collecting sex tapes from some students and reselling them to porn websites. I guess in a lot of cases, the girls didn't even know they were being filmed. I never checked them online, though. It's not a rumor, it's true. She even admitted to it herself. Not sure if this is related, but I've seen videos of Lucas on porn websites. Same. Plus one. Not just Lucas, by the way. There are a few other guys from this universe who had videos of them having sex with a lot of different girls. Would that mean that Lucy had a deal with these guys? That would explain Evelyn's question, that responsibility. But how could she know something like that? She's a witch! She knows everything! We're all gonna die. It's only a matter of time. My theory seems to be confirmed. There are two types of victims. Punished and the disobedience. The punished are targeted directly through Evelyn's questions, which allows her to remind them of their misdeeds before killing them. They are guilty of having carried out terrible acts, supposedly on girls. In other words, those who didn't do any evil thing have nothing to fear in principle. As for the disobedience, it can be anyone. The moment you disobey Evelyn's rules, you have a target on your head. Supposedly, it would be enough to pretend to be a good student and to obey her orders when she gives them. Supposedly. I shake my head. There are too many holes in my reasoning. Too many gray areas. This is the only lead I have. This could save lives. I need to tell everyone. Look, I don't think she's randomly targeting her victims. Shut up! Matt didn't deserve to die, not like this. Lucas, Matt, now Lucy. Every time she asks a question, she knows something morally wrong her victims did. Exactly! She only targets sinners. You have condemned us all, you fuckers. What's your deal, Kay? You're just saying that you agree with the other sicko here? It's a bit more complicated. Basically, Evelyn kills people who she thinks have done something terrible. She asks them a question with no good answer. She kills them. And Alicia, she killed her while she was collapsing the floor vomiting. That's because in addition to her sadistic justice, Evelyn also kills people who don't obey the rules. Like those who stood by the door despite her threats. You're on her side or what? It's their fault they were killed by that crazy bitch? You're paralyzed with fear. He's on her side for sure. What's with that bullshit rules? If no one knows them, it just means she's killing blindly. It's a bullshit excuse to kill us all like pigs. Doesn't make sense. She just kills for fun. She is a witch. She wants to, us to sacrifice us to invoke an ancient demon on Earth. Shit. I underestimated the difficulty of sharing ideas online. Drafts. Nobody's really listening to me. A very light tap on my back almost makes me scream in surprise. I turn around and see Jessica, Dan, and Wes on the seats right behind me. Hey, it's not that dumb, your, your theory. Jessica is careful to keep her voice low. Despite the relative distance between us and the board, and thus Evelyn, there's no telling how much she can hear us. What are you doing here? You're insane. Why would you move from your seats? It's okay if she's focused on writing. Look. I quickly turn back to Evelyn and see with relief that she is still facing the board, writing sociological concepts that sound completely unfamiliar to me. Uh, seems like she can't hear us, but it should be fine. Emma joins the discussion. Okay, I think your theory makes sense, but... Yeah, it's not stupid, but we still know how to get out of here. More spurs get our attention. Okay, are you sure about your theory? How do you explain the witch th that the witch spared Rose? She was with the others near the door, right, though? I catch a glimpse of the twins who have moved closer... And are now almost glued to Emma. Rose, the one who passed out on the floor? The twins nod their heads perfectly in sync. 
That's what I was going to say. There are some details I still don't understand at all. I glance back at Evelyn in fear again. She quietly continues to write a rather dense lecture on the board, clearly unbothered by our whispers. I try to remember the scene. Rose. That's consistent with what Kay says. Rose passed out, so she couldn't obey the rules. What the hell are you talking about? The witch. She asked everyone to go sit down. That is the rule. Go back to your seat. Does that mean we're in danger since we switched places? I don't think so, since the murder started. I've changed seats three times and I still haven't been targeted. As long as we stay seated, I think she's satisfied. Why did you change your seat three times? Jessica looks at Dan like she's talking to a child. To get me closer to you so we can come up with a plan, you idiots. But to get back to Rose, that doesn't add up. She killed Alicia who was throwing up. She didn't get back to her seat either. The scene suddenly comes back to my mind. Poor thing, she fainted. What kind of teacher would I be if I punished a student with anemia? As for her, I'm sorry, but eating is not allowed in class. That's how you make the room dirty. The rule, the rule is to behave in class. Remember, she said she couldn't punish someone with anemia. She, she couldn't kill Rose. She spares someone who has anemia, but she punishes someone who can't control their gut when facing dead corpses? That's complete bullshit. She made it clear that no eating was allowed in class, even though she knew full well that Alicia was throwing up because of the situation and not because of her breakfast. Her reasoning is particularly sick for sure. But since there have been plenty of other students who threw up and are still alive... Jessica fixes Emma with an icy stare. They're in their seats, which was the main rule. Go back to your seats. That's completely twisted. She was throwing up. She couldn't go back to her seat. Yeah, it just shows how sadistic she is. If you know you can't hold your gut in, then you shouldn't have headed for the door. But Rose fainted. According to your twisted reasoning, she, too, should have stayed in her place. She knew she couldn't stand. I massage my aching temples. I don't know. Maybe she sees anemia as potentially related to poor health, so something we don't choose. You don't get you don't choose to vomit. Maybe, but it's not so much a matter of affliction as of consequence. When you vomit, you're still conscious even if moving is very delicate. She doesn't want to kill people who won't see they're just coming at them. She is the worst kind of sadist. She insists on following the rules normally imposed by a teacher. A teacher? You said she was a teacher? She's not here to teach us anything. She's there to kill! We all know that. Kiss theory is that she's playing teacher to catch us off guard on very simple rules of behavior that everyone knows, but applied to a morbid supernatural situation. That's why she's sure everyone will make mistakes. It's disgustingly sadistic, but it seems to fit her personality well. Exactly. Look, I don't know where her supernatural powers come from, nor do I know why we're stuck in such a nightmare. However, I get the impression that she's trying to punish certain students guilty of behavior deemed harmful. Dan raises his voice slightly despite the risks. What do you mean exactly? She's playing the vigilante, that's your theory? So all the guys who are not perfect have to die? Guys or girls, it seems. I don't care. You're saying I deserve to die? Emma turns back to Evelyn, looking very concerned. Dan, I'm begging you. Keep your voice down. Dan, we don't make the rules. I, j I just feel like I have to bet my life on your bullshit theory. That's what you're saying? And you're safe because you're the nice little boyfriend of a nice little girl? Jessica slaps the back of his head. We told you to shut up. And stop freaking out. We're all in this together. Dan stares murderously at Jessica, but eventually regains his composure. We're just trying to figure out this witch's motives to maybe save some lives. Nothing more. Dan looks unconvinced. Yeah, to save your lives. Wait. Why are you convinced that Evelyn is going to come after you? Don't tell me you did terrible things to a girl. Dan turns sharply to me. Of course not. 
Not a freak. Jessica raises her eyebrows. Of course not. I, I have principles. Good for you. But then, why do you feel so threatened? She is indeed seeking revenge on anyone who has hurt a girl in the past, then. Jen pauses, staring into space. I've never done anything atrocious like Lucas. I'm not exactly the monogamous type, you, you know me. But I've been with a lot of girls in a relationship. Single, but it didn't matter to me. I probably caused a lot of breakups, and sometimes for couples who were pretty serious. Not that serious, considering these girls are willing to sleep with a guy like you. I'm not saying I'm super proud of it, but it's not like it's against the law. I may not be the only one at fault. Next to cheat, right? I'm almost surprised you know that. It still makes me a guy with reprehensible behavior. Call it morals, values, or anything. It, if it fits into her rules, I'm doomed. She's going to bleed me dry for acting like this. On the other hand, if you really did act like trash... Emma glares at Chloe. Don't say things like that! No one deserves to die for that! Jessica gives Chloe the coldest look I've ever seen. You're a pro-death penalty. You're pro-death penalty, right? Watching bad guys die in front of you makes you happy. Does it make you feel better about your own little life? Chloe looks down at the floor, but Zoe immediately flies to her rescue. The twins have always been extremely close and supportive of each other. That's not what she meant. No one wants to dare to die, but if Kay's theory's right, that's pretty reassuring, right? It means there's real hope for some of the students. Good students, right? Trash like me can croak as quickly as possible to help you get out. No, that, that's not it. That's not what you meant, right? How do you shut up instead? What do you think? Dan, calm down. Right now, the witch is only targeting people who have actually done horrible things. I don't tell him whether she'll actually start targeting minor sins like cheating on someone. If so, pretty much everyone will be on the death row, not just you, so uh, you can take some solace in that. Dan's shell begins to crack, and I begin to detect signs of fear on his face. Fear of being next in line. I place my hand on his arm. I have nothing to offer him, but my empathy. And my fear. Jessica's right. She starts killing over little mistakes, and we're all dead. No one is perfect. Visibly on the verge of tears, Dan looks at me, shaking his head. Alright, back to the main topic. How can we use this theory to get out of here? Yeah, we have to find a loophole in the rules. There's gotta be one. I keep to myself my fear that any possible loophole, if there is one, could have been left knowingly by Evelyn to trap us. To kill us, and any trace of hope even more cruelly. Wes speaks up. I forgot he was here, too. What if someone pure tried to open the door? Jessica glares at him. Haven't you been listening? Anyone who doesn't follow the rules gets killed, too. Pure or not? Wes shakes his head, an unusually serious look on his face. Oh, that's a corollary, corollary of case theory. It's theories just that Devlin targets impure students when she asks questions, which has been true so far. So what, the others hadn't done anything? So what, the others hadn't done anything? That we don't know. You said yourself, nobody's perfect. Maybe all those who have died so far had something to blame. Yeah, including the guy who tried to open the door. And maybe that's why, that's why he was burned alive. B because he was a, a sinner, too. I painfully suppress a new shudder. Burned alive. That's probably the worst kind of death. Your theory is based on, an, on untested assumptions. A case? If you're right, then since no one is perfect, we're all doomed, all of us. 
So I have nothing to lose by trying anything, including my theory. Dan stares at Wes with the pleading look of one who is willing to do anything to survive. Wes, what do you suggest? It is very simple. I think there are pure and impure students by Evelyn's standards. The pure are not supposed to die, while the others are definitely doomed. As a result, all we have to do is send some pure to open the door. The witch won't want to kill him, and we'll have a real escape route. And while she's busy killing the next impure one on the list, we can try to all escape together. Since there will be pure people in the crowd, she won't be able to kill indiscriminately, which will leave the possibility for some, some of the impure ones to get out alive. Yeah, yeah, that's not so dumb. Uh, like he said, we, we don't have anything to lose. With your stupid theory, we're all gonna die for sure. This theory is even more fictitious than mine. A pure delirium with childish naivete. As if the key to our survival could rest on something so simple, so black and white. And yet... It's tempting to cling to the slightest hint of hope, however illusory and ridiculous. 